My name is Tiana Uchaz, and I'm a postdoc with the Making and Knowing Project. Uh, I joined the project in the fall of 2016, and my background is in 16th century Netherlandish art history. So today I'm going to talk to you about the way that the different parts of our project are integrated by using a case study from one of our lab course um, iterations in the fall. Next to me are these beautiful dried flowers, which our student Caitlin Seller investigated um, in conjunction with the recipe on how to keep flowers all year. At least that's the title that we were working with in the fall of 2016. That recipe involved sourcing uh, organic flowers, which was incredibly difficult since the author practitioner called for all spring flowers and it was November. The recipe entails taking these flowers and drying them out in boxes full of sand. And so Caitlin diligently sourced organic flowers at least and um, made great justifications for the compromises between not being able to use the spring flowers and so did some botanical research to find appropriate substitutes. But for a number of logistic reasons, by the time we were ready to put them in the boxes of sand, they were a little bit wilted and my heart was kind of, you know, fluttering because I thought, oh no, the author practitioner is so explicit that you should really use flowers that are freshly picked, that are most robust, and I thought, is this going to work? We put the flowers in, they sat there for 10 nights, drying out, and then with no help from the author practitioner, because he offers no uh, explanation about how you're supposed to get dried and delicate flowers back out of the sand boxes, we diligently removed them with spoons and cups uh, very carefully, and we were astonished to find that the flowers looked almost identical to the way they looked going in. That is, they were all still slightly wilted, the delphiniums and the larkspurs both. The color was perfectly preserved and so was the form. And it made us go back to the text and we looked and realized that the working translation that we'd been basing our experiment off of had missed something in that first pass of one of our textual uh, workshops that happened in the summer. And the title, rather than how to keep flowers all year was actually how to keep flowers in the same condition all year. And so by actually going through this experiment um, and having things go slightly awry, it prompted us to go back and re-examine the actual text of the manuscript and our own interpretations of it. So this is a great example of the kind of iterative and reinforcing process that runs behind the Making and Knowing project, where the text uh, workshops are informed by laboratory work that then informs the next iteration of the text workshops.